Bar chords are a game changer when learning the guitar. Because these shapes can be shifted up and down the neck, they give you a ton of freedom. They allow you to unlock the entire fretboard and easily move around keys of music. This video will show you how to construct the chords. We will look at a stretching exercise that's really gonna help you play them, and there'll be a quick song tutorial thrown in for you to put these chords into practice. I'll also link a free PDF of the song we cover and some other finger exercises for you to try in the description below. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing good. So bar chords, they can appear as a big step up when learning the guitar. They can look quite daunting, especially if you've just been playing open chords, but they really shouldn't be viewed that way. If you've got some open chords in your locker, then you're ready to tackle these. We're gonna learn how to shape these chords first, but don't worry if you're struggling with that because afterwards we're gonna throw in a stretching exercise that's really gonna help pull everything together. First thing we're gonna do is put our first finger behind the third fret of the lowest E string. We are playing a G note. And this is all gonna tie nicely into the song we're gonna cover at the end. We want our finger here to be nice and straight. Eventually, our first finger is gonna be pulling out the highest E, B, and G string in some cases as well. So we want it to be as straight as possible in these early stages. And we're gonna use our thumb to clamp that finger and help apply the pressure so that we can really squeeze that neck, not too hard, we don't wanna overdo it, but just squeeze enough so that we're pulling into those strings and we're hopefully gonna get a nice clear note. But let's just worry about that lowest E string first and get the root note of this chord going. G. So whatever note we play with our first finger, that is the root of the chord that we are shaping. Because we're on the third fret, the lowest E, we are playing a G note, E, F, F sharp, G. So the shape we're forming is gonna be around G. It's gonna be a G major bar chord to begin with. We mentioned the thumb briefly. So at the moment, my thumb is around the center of the back of the neck. Now don't stress too much about this. Everyone's will be slightly different. You will see people raise their thumb a little bit and maybe a bit further down. Because everyone's hand shape and size is a little bit different, there might be a sweet spot that works well for you. But the important thing to remember is to not bring the thumb right over the top. If you do that, you're really gonna restrict the ability of your fingers to be able to stretch out across three frets. You're gonna pull that first finger into a bit of an awkward position, so make sure you're not coming too far up. And likewise, don't go too low as well, because you'll start to push your wrist out and it's gonna be harder to apply the pressure that we need and you're gonna cause some awkwardness and potentially some pain there that we don't want. So my thumb is around the center of the neck. My wrist is pointing a little bit out, but not too far. My elbow as well is quite quite close to my body. I don't want to be pushing that out really far away from me. That's also going to cause some awkwardness and make it trickier to shape this chord. So after we've done that with our first finger, we're going to add the fifth of this chord that we're shaping. And that comes with our third finger. We go down one string and two frets across and we will find the fifth of that chord. Our G is our first. If we count up five in the G major scale, we've got G, A, B, C, D. And that is found here on the fifth fret of the A string. So our first and our fifth. We are now gonna add the octave. Our little finger comes underneath that third finger. So it's also on the fifth fret. It's on the fifth fret of the D. So, so far we've got third fret of the E, fifth fret of the A, and fifth fret of the D. That note there is a G note. If we go down two strings this time and across two frets, we've also got a G note there. We're playing the octave of that first. So we're forming a power chord at the moment. We wanna turn this into a bar chord. And that starts to happen when we put our second finger onto the full fret of the G. We are adding the major element of this chord now. We've got the first, the fifth, the octave. The third note will make it a major chord. In this case, it's a B note. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. With our second finger added to what's already down, we have got a G major. And then the work of the first finger really comes into play. As well as fretting that third fret, we wanna be laying nice and straight so that it pulls out the highest B and the E. We want all six strings to come through nice and clear. We're teaching our hands and fingers to do new things all the time when we're learning guitar, so don't worry if it don't click straight away. And we now have chromatic abilities with this chord, meaning we can just shift this shape up and down the fretboard. All six strings still come through, and you play that wherever you want on the neck, keeping the principle of that two fret distance, our root, down one string, across two frets for our fifth, shaping the rest of the chord. You can play that shape anywhere. And moving in line with your chromatic scale, we have got the shape for every note that exists in our chromatic scale, G. G sharp, A, A sharp, jump all the way up to E, F, 
go as far as you want or as you can on your guitar. And another thing that might help that idea click is if you think of your open chord shapes, in particular an E major, we've got the open strings that exist around that. If we just shift that shape up one and then replace the fingers with our third, fourth and second and our first finger then does the job of what those open strings were doing. So let's look at that once more with the fretting that I've got now, the fingers that I'm using. E major, shift it up one. First finger replaces those open notes. It's basically acting like a capo for us. That first finger, because no open notes are coming through, allow us to move that E major shape everywhere we want to on the neck. We could use a capo and apply the same idea and just play that E major shape. If the capo doesn't move with us, you get some interesting sounding chords, but not all exactly what you might be after. If we want to make that a minor, we just take our second finger off. We're utilizing our first finger even more now because the first finger is going to put out that G string, third fret. We have our G minor, G major and then we change one note to make it a minor. We flatten the third of that chord, a semitone, one fret. We go back, one fret, we have G minor. Again, apply that everywhere up and down the neck. B major, B minor, A major, A minor. Lovely. So let's move that shape down so that the root note is played on the A string. This time, our third finger is gonna lay flat across the D, the G, and the B string on the fifth fret, that is where our bar comes in. And our root, our bass note, is coming from that first finger on the third fret of the A. I love this shape. I've mentioned this in other videos, but it always reminds me of Kurt Cobain. But that's probably something to do with how much the teenage me modelled myself on Kurt Cobain. And with this shape, my thumb is still around the centre of the neck. I haven't moved too far up or too far down. That's allowing me to form a nice position. Again, what suits you, those small little tweaks, those small little adjustments you need to make, that's fine. My second finger is just sitting in between the first and the third. It's not interfering, it's not playing any notes. We got four strings coming through, the A, D, G, and B. Some people will bring out that high E string with the first finger, which will be the third fret of that high E. And to do that, you've got to make sure you've got a big curve in that third finger. Move that little finger out of the way for you to see, to allow that high E to come through. Now, it's not essential. There's a lot of information going on in that chord anyway. It sounds okay when it's there. I'm not adverse to it. But it's not necessary. If you want to, if you want to practice it, and bend that third finger so that high E comes through. You will also sometimes see this shape done this way. First finger's the same, but the second, third, and fourth finger will stretch across to the fifth fret. I don't like that shape personally. I think it's unnecessary. We can cover everything we need with that third finger and also this shape shifts really nicely if you want to go into the lower bar chord. You can see the fingers just sort of roll over the strings, really smooth. That third finger in particular just rolls onto that A string. Little finger underneath, first finger creeps up, second finger tucked in between. We're in A major. If we want to make this shape minor, again, it's one note difference. We've got our bar going on. We can raise that third finger, our little finger tucks underneath onto the fifth fret of the G, and then our second finger goes behind onto the full fret of the B. So we've got a C minor, C major. One note difference, C minor. See that note tucked in there? The other's built individually around it. And you can bring out that high E if you want this time. Sounds nice in there. Thinking of the capo reference we made earlier, if I move this shape back, these three fingers, I'm in A minor. If I move it all up one, I'm in A sharp minor or B flat minor. B minor, C minor, C sharp minor, D minor, D sharp, B minor. All the way up the fretboard, all the way through the chromatic scale. Again, remember what's comfortable for you and your hand shape, don't ever do it. On that note, let's have a little look at a stretching exercise. So we're gonna go to the fifth fret of the highest E string and we're gonna go five, Six, first and second finger. This exercise is really gonna help work on the independence of each finger and the stretch that you're gonna to need to really master these chords. So after five, six on the E, we go five, seven on the B string. Our first finger creeps up, clamping down that second and third finger, so they're working as a unit. 
Then we go 5-8, first finger creeps up again. Then we start to work our way back, 5-7, five, 5-6, five, first finger still creeping up nice and straight, and then 5-8. Once you've finished that pattern, our first finger has crept its way up all six strings, we then clap. Don't rest that second finger on there to cheat and give you some extra pressure, because later on with the bar chords, we're not gonna have that second finger. So really work on your first finger, being able to lay flat across all six strings. And then we can reverse. Five, six, five, seven, five, eight. Work our way back. Five, seven, five, six, five, eight. See how everything is across four frets there as well. A finger per fret. And then work our way back up. Five, six, five, seven, five, eight. Five, seven, five, six, five, eight. Bar. Take your time with that one, start it really slowly, add it to your practice routine. If you're doing a little bit every day or every time you pick up the guitar to practice, throw that stretching exercise in there and you will really start to notice the difference. You can also move that chromatically like we did with the bar chord shape. You can start that anywhere you want on the fretboard. If it's too far apart, if the frets are too distanced here, move up, start on the 12th fret. If you're feeling comfortable in that fifth fret position, start to shift back a fret each time you feel comfortable and eventually you'll be able to tackle that in the first position as well. Okay, so a song now to put these chords into practice. We started with our G major chord, our G major bar shape, for a reason, because we are gonna look at Radiohead's Creep. The first chord that exists in that song is a G major bar chord shape. We're just gonna single strum these chords first so that we get used to the progression. So we're on our third fret, G major bar chord. We then shift everything up to the seventh and the ninth and we are playing a B major. Exactly the same shape, but from the third to the seventh. All six strings coming through. We then move it, that up again, one more fret. Following our chromatic pattern, we are now in C. Once you've played that C major, we take the second finger off, rely on our first finger a little bit more, and we are playing a C minor. All six strings again coming through nice and clear. If you are struggling, because sometimes the further you get up the fretboard, your strings become a little bit further away from the neck, depending what guitar that you've got. The action, that's known as, if you're not too sure. So if you need to use that second finger to help the first finger pull out that G, that's okay. And that is your whole progression throughout the whole song. When you listen to the original, there's lots of picking guitar in there. He's not really strumming that guitar in the verses. But for our purposes here, just to get used to these calls, moving them up and down the fretboard, I'm just gonna apply a strumming pattern that you can, to begin with, use throughout the whole song. called shapes. If you apply that initial shaping technique, you use that stretching exercise, and if you want, you use that song as an opportunity to practice them, you will master these chords. Hopefully you're feeling confident with these chords now, and I encourage you to go and explore some of the songs you love, because I guarantee you will find some bar chords in there. If you want to add some more power chord songs to your locker, then check out this video I made of five songs from five different bands that played a big part in helping me learn the guitar. A big thank you for checking out this video, I really appreciate it. Feel free to contact me with any questions, comments, feedback, things you want me to check out, guitar you want me to listen to, songs you want me to listen to. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Hope you have a good day and I'll hopefully catch you again soon. Take care.